Okay, hello. This is Mr. Gale, and we're going to be doing a few videos where we're going to go through everything uh, that will extend from the last class. The last class I had uh, physics students teaching you about position time graphs and velocity time graphs and possibly acceleration time graphs. Uh, hopefully some of you learned a little bit about that. And so I'm going to be uh, going on from that and teaching you the last thing that you need to know before the midterm. Uh, this will be how we use limits to find derivatives. So we're going to learn what derivatives are here. Uh, it's not going to be uh, probably too crazy for you. I think it, it should be pretty easy for you all to understand once we go through it. Um, so I'm going to first do this video where I'm going to review the things you already learned in the class with the, with the physics students. And if you already understand it, if you feel perfectly okay, then I suggest you move on to the second video. But uh, if you want a little review and you want to just make sure you understand everything perfectly clearly and or perhaps there's some missing things in your notes and like I said this will be on the midterm and on the second test when you come back. So make sure you understand these things. Uh, so without further ado I'm going to do a little tiny review of how we create velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs from position time graphs and why am I doing these specific graphs and what's so special about them. Now the reason I use position time graphs uh, is because I feel that this is an easy way for you to understand what exactly are derivatives. Uh, so bear with me and let's just do a little review today. Okay, so first the position time graph. Let's assume we have um, uh, this little man Okay, and he's, he's going to uh, run across the ground. Let's just throw the ground here. And let's say he's going to start from a uh, little position here. Let's see here. Here he is running. Right. And starting at, uh, let's say, time of zero, he runs forward uh, and starts at a point uh, before, before the finish line, uh, the starting line. So this is where he's supposed to start. Maybe all his friends start at this point, but he starts uh, behind it, maybe uh, three three meters behind, and he runs to a point that's, uh, say, I don't know, three, I draw this kind of badly, but three meters forward, and it takes, it takes 12 seconds. 12 seconds. And, and this is pretty easy stuff. You, you've done this before in middle school. So this part should not be very difficult to understand. Uh, okay. And let's say he's running, running uh, at, at a constant speed, constant speed. And hopefully, uh, when you were talking to everybody in the last class, you realize that constant speed has a certain look to it. And this is really important that there is a certain shape associated with something that is at constant speed. And hopefully everyone told you, well, actually, that looks like a straight line on a uh, position time graph. So notice how we've got delta x on the y-axis and delta t on the x-axis. Now, why did I do that? We'll talk about that in a second. But first, I started at negative 3 because I'm 3 behind behind the the starting line. So if I was going to look at this, I want to say, okay, well, let me see. Going to the left, I would consider that to be in the negative direction. Going forward is in the positive direction. And so he ran in the positive direction, starting at a position that was three behind, I guess what I'm saying, the starting point. And what is the starting point? I'm going to call that, that's my zero. Okay. So I get to choose where the zero is. I don't have to say that this is zero. I'm, I'm doing it for this because I want to make things a little more interesting on the graph. But I could have said that uh, where the person starts running is the zero. And that would make a different, slightly different graph here. And if you think about it, you probably can see why it would be different. I would be changing where I start from at T0. So right now at T0, I'm starting at negative 3. And then I am going to be going for, let me see, 12 seconds. And I'm going to finish at 
3, positive 3. All right. And I'm going to have a graph that looks like that. And this is probably what you did in middle school. And it's actually not too complicated. You can even see there's a few points here. Um, this is an important point. It's where I start is an important point. You might notice also that, uh, let me see if I'm running up here. It takes me this long to get here. And it looks like I hit roughly um, at the zero point here, which means, oh, okay. So after six seconds, I'm passing by. I'm uh, Okay, so this, um, let me see, around here. Um, this is where I am at, this is me at T, what is it, T sub 6, T sub 6. And then over here, I've drawn this really badly, this is, I, I shouldn't, I drew this 3 meters much, much longer than this 3 meters, so forgive me, I didn't draw this very good, but here is him at T sub 12, over here at T sub 12. So, I'm running at a constant speed and 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 so i already know in physics that if i have a graph that looks like this it is going to look like this when i look at a velocity time graph and, and why is that we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about why if i know that it looks like this that i'm going to have something that looks like this and that's going to look like this and that's going to look like something like this on the zero line. I should draw all the little graphs here. Here, I'm going to draw all the graphs. There we go. And what exactly am I doing as I go down and down and down and down my to my different types of graphs? Right here, I'm just going one step. I'm going from a position time graph down to a velocity time graph. But there's some rules that you've learned that the physics people have learned is that a curve will turn into a straight slope line. A straight slope line will be a flattened, a, 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 a line with a slope of zero, actually. And then the last, if I go from a straight sloped, uh, sorry, a straight horizontal line, it'll become a horizontal line that's on the zero, on the x-axis. And why is that? Now, we haven't really thought about that, talked about it too much in physics. We just said, well, those are the shapes that you get. That's, that's just what happens. But why? That's what we're going to get into. So what I wanted you to do was also then to look at, well, how do I get the slope of this graph at any point? Um, now, I can pick any point I want, but let's just say I want to know, okay, what is the slope at point A? So we'll call this point A. Point A. Well, Hopefully you realize that if it's a straight line, the slope is the same everywhere, which makes this much easier for me. I can pick any two points. Uh, let's say I'm going to pick this point. This would be uh, T. Now I'm calling this T1 because it's the first one I'm going to use. But I guess this is T sub 0. But I'm just going to say it's T, T1 and X1. Or rather, how should I put it? Yes, T1, X1, my X and my Ys. And then I'm going to pick another point. Let's say up here. We're going to call that T2 x2 and and as long as you've done a little bit of middle school uh, math then you realize well let me see that means i have a slope of my line is nothing more than the change in the y direction change in the y direction which in this case i should be saying delta y but this is not y right now it's delta x so the change in my x and here would be the change in my time so my slope, my slope is equal to delta x over delta t. And as soon as I see that, I go, wait a minute, delta x, and I should put a little line over that, because it is a, it is, there's a difference between going in the forward or going in the negative direction. But my slope is equal to what? Well, if I think about it, I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's, that's, that's velocity, that's my speed distance over time you you learned that a long time ago you did that in science 10 so this should be pretty obvious to you that the slope of this line is the change in the y over the change in the x in this case the delta x over delta t and that is giving me uh, the slope at any point along this straight line because it is a constant slope and notice what i said over here it's a constant speed and what did i say here it's a Const, this is here a constant slope. 
But I also say, well, if the slope is equal, if slope is equal to velocity, that means that a straight slope line, which has a constant slope, is also telling me that I have a constant speed. So what does that look like? Well, the rules are is that I make, I, I draw some lines down here. I go like this. Da, da, da. I find some particular points. So I'm going to make a point down here. Da, 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 da. And I'm looking at my velocity time over here. And I go, okay, how do I draw it? Well, what is the velocity telling me? Well, it's telling me what the slopes are of the position time graph. Because if slope is equal to velocity, then all I'm drawing here, all this is, is a map, a map of the slopes map of the slopes of the x versus t graph. That's all I'm doing. Let's make that clear. I am making a velocity time graph. But what I'm doing is I'm drawing here what the slopes are of this. So essentially, what I'm trying to do is just simply figure out the slopes are and putting down here. And what I get will be what the velocity is up there. Okay, so how do I do it? Well, I figure out the slope. So what is what is what is my slope? Well, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Positive. If I look, I'm going up. So it's a positive six. That's my slope. Slope is equal to positive six over, well, positive twelve. That means I have a slope of one half. One half. Well, I don't know what the units are. Let's say these are, let's say meters, and we'll say these are in seconds. So this would be one half meters per second, right? Meters over seconds, because this is one of meters, and this is 12 seconds. So one half, 0.5 meters per second. So how do I draw that here? Well, does it change? No. So what is the speed at uh, t sub zero? Well, it's 0.5 meters per second. What is it over here? Oh, still 0.5 meters. In fact, it's always positive 0.5. Whoa, I'm going to draw that again with a nice line. Make it look nice. Here we go. And I got a nice slope. Here's my my map of the slopes of this graph above. Very simple in this case. Very simple. There's not much to it. So my velocity here, and I'm just going to mark it here, this is 0 0.5 meters per second. And if you think about it, well, what if I found the slope? What is the slope of this? Well, that's, let's, let's think about that. It'll be the change in velocity, change in velocity, because that's my y now. My y is not now, it's no longer delta x, it's delta v over delta t. Well, what is that? Let me see. Uh, uh, velocity is meters per second, and I'm dividing by seconds. That's equal to meters per second squared. That's acceleration. So I could actually keep going. Like, I went down, I made this. This is a Mapping of the slopes of the x versus time. So I could make another map. I could keep going and make another map. Another map. Right? Another map down here would be another map of the slopes of the v versus t graph. Right? So that's equal to velocity here. Right, the first one's equal to velocity, but this one would be equal to acceleration. And if you think about it, if I'm moving at a constant speed, am I accelerating? Well, no, I'm not. I'm not accelerating at all. Well, does that work out here then? Well, let's look at this. Okay, what is my slope? Well, my change in my v. If I look at it, if I pick two points, well, let me see. I'll take this point and this point. Well, very clearly, it does not change anything in the v direction so my delta v would be zero and zero divided by well what is this 12 seconds zero divided by 12 gives me a slope of zero a horizontal line is a slope of zero which means my acceleration time graph would be a straight horizontal line where oh right on the x-axis right at zero so my acceleration time graph would be pretty boring looking there's not much to it uh, it's just going to show me that. But it is in line with what we were talking about before, about how a straight slope line 
becomes a straight horizontal line of some value. And that straight horizontal line will become a straight horizontal line on the x-axis. There is some relationship between the shape that you get from another shape. And why is that? Well, start thinking about that a little bit. What kind of function is this? Because remember, we're talking about functions here. A straight slope line, that's a linear function. What is a straight horizontal line? Hopefully you know what that is. It's not actually a linear function. We do define this as being a different type of function. So the question is, is can you tell me what that is? And why does that become that? That's a really good question. And we're going to talk about that a lot more. Now one thing that you might ask me is, well, well why, why x versus t? X, why x versus t? Why not? What if I said, what if I said, instead, um, I'm not going to do delta, why not, Mr. Gale, why, why not delta t versus delta x? Why not, why not do that? Why not have it this way? And if you think about it, um, there's a very, very good reason. And it's because you cannot make a function out of this sometimes. Let's consider a situation where that happens. Okay, so, oops, I'm not going to draw that. Let me just erase that there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I got a little guy, and he starts at x equals 6. And he starts running for how long? He runs for, or runs, runs, runs for 2 seconds. Runs for 2 seconds, and uh, reaches uh, x equals uh, 10. Oh, by the way, uh, at... Uh, running at constant speed. Let's just make this very simple. Constant speed. So let me see. Uh, here, here's x equals 10 over here. And then our little man, he goes, ray. Right? Reaches x equals 10. Then runs backwards. Backwards uh, to x equals what? Um, let's say x equals 2 um, at, at a constant speed also. Okay? Also also constant speed. Constant speed. And this will take 2 more seconds. In 2 seconds. So at constant speed in 2 seconds. So then, so you start, let me see how it's going to work. Yeah, you, would, you would start going run, and then you run back and now where are you at you're at x equals two and this is where you finish you finish so here he's just going to go Wee! Yay! okay so he jumps to over here to x equals two now what i'm going to do here is first i'm going to draw it as you would normally let's just draw it as an x versus t what does that look like okay so at t uh zero where am I? I'm well. I'm at x equals two. Actually, I can't draw this, can I? I've got. I don't have enough room, so I have to. Let me see. I'm gonna. I don't have a six. Let's 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 change some numbers here to make it this work. Okay. Um, three, six, nine, twelve. Maybe that'll help me out. Okay. So at t sub zero, I'm going to start at x equals six. And then for two seconds, there's two seconds, I reach 10. Okay, so I'm going to go there. There's my constant speed running. And that's roughly 10. Maybe it's a little off, but you get the idea. And then for another two seconds, so I'm at four seconds now, I'm going to reach x equals 2, which is about there. So if I look at that, I go, okay, all right, that seems to make sense. I, I ran this way. And my slope, I can actually tell what my speed is, uh, delta x over delta t. And I could say, well, well um, delta x over delta t is equal to, let me see, that's a change of, well, it's, um, delta x is 4, 4, let's say meters, over how many seconds? 2 seconds. So I was running, and by the way, positive, positive, so I'm running at a positive 2 meters per second. What's interesting, too, is when you look at the slope of this one, I'm going to have, let me see, I go from 10 down to Two and so what was my delta? What was my slope here? My slope in this case 
is equal to negative. It's a negative slope. I'm pointing, that's, that line is pointing downwards. It's a negative slope. So I have a negative 8 over positive 2. It's still in, I'm still moving forward in time. So it's still positive 2. So I'm going to have a negative 4 meters per second. Now, uh, if I was going to even then draw the velocity time graph, it would be fairly easy because then I could say, okay, let me see, let's draw our little lines down here so we can find out what we're talking about. We're talking about two and four. Okay. And then what do I got? Well, I'm going to have a positive two constant from zero to two. There we go. Um, now, there's something a little funny about this when I draw this because notice uh, my other one's going to be negative four. Here it is down here bit of a jump bit of a jump like look at this there's kind of this what happened here I kind of went -na -na -na, and then went whoop really far down and suddenly was going at this speed you know that something had to happen when you reach 10 and uh, if some of you are thinking about this you think yeah I had to slow down I had to slow down until I reached uh, a negative velocity so this doesn't quite match reality and you would be right there's something wrong with this graph here for reality but I don't want to think about that too much right now. I want you to think about it, but don't worry about it yet. It, it's something that uh, in physics it becomes much more important, but you know that there must be some kind of deacceleration going on in reality. But since we're only talking about the math and we're interested only in the math, we can say, wait a minute, I go boop, boop, and jump down to negative four, and away I go. And I've got my two graphs. Here's my velocity, here's my displacement. Everything looks great. Now, what if, what if, I'm going to erase this now, let me just uh, get rid of all of this. Mm -hmm. What if instead I said, no, I want to do time versus x. Why? Well, because I like putting x's on the x-axis. It makes more sense to me. Okay, so let's see what happens. There's a few problems with this. So let's say I start at x at time 0. I am at x equals 6. Here I am. Now, for two seconds, okay, so that means here's two seconds is going on the y-axis. So for two seconds along this line, I then add at x equals 10. And okay, all right, so, so far so good. So far so good. I go, okay, that looks pretty normal. Nothing weird about that. Nice straight line going over here. Maybe this means something. I don't know. Although I have to be careful about this because then when I say, well, what is my slope? My slope's equal to delta t over delta x and I think okay well maybe this is just weird because I'm doing people running but this doesn't have to be x's and t's this could be just x and y and this would be well that just still it would only my delta y over delta x what's wrong with that Mr. Gale and I say well I don't know I don't know let's see what happens let's continue um, what happens next I go back to x equals 2 after 2 more seconds. Well, here's 2 more seconds. And then suddenly I'm over here. Well, what's that look like? Let me draw the line. Now, the big question. Okay, can I do this? There's a very good reason why you can't do this. And what is it? Most of you now, everyone, think about it now. Why can I not do this? And you should know this because we've done this already. It's very simple. Do a little vertical line test. What do we got? Check it out. Looks to me like I've got two outputs for one input. No, I can't do this. Not a function. This is not a function. I can't do this. So, setting it up the way I did was important because any other way, and you're bound to have these problems, I can actually be at the same place at different times. Of course I can. I could go along a path, and then I could go back along that path. That means I have to have, for to make this a true function, is I have to have it in a way where I have to say, well, if you tell me the time, I can tell you where you were. But if I tell you the position, you can't quite tell me what time I was there 
in many situations because sometimes I was there twice or maybe three times. What if the position time graph looked like this? Wee, 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 wee. And then I look at, I say, okay, when were you at three? You say, well, I was there a lot of times. I was there then and then and then and then and then and then. It doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite work. So I have to have it where I am looking at the independent and dependent variables. This is one thing you did a long time ago in class before, but which variable should be on the y-axis and which variable should be on the x? And if you think about it, it does make a lot of sense. If I know this, can you tell me the other value? Okay, so if I give you the x value, can you give me the y? Yes. If I give you the y value, can you give me the x? Not necessarily always. I might have to give you more than one answer. Think about when we did quadratics. When I say, what is the root? You say, well, the roots, two different x's, right? Two different x's. But if I said, what is the y at x equals, I don't know, right here. Well, you could say, oh, it's right here. It's exactly this value and only this value. But if I asked you for a um, an x, if I only knew the y, it's possible, like look at this function, I could have something that looks like this. And I said, or think about a sine graph. When does this happen? You could say, well, it happens quite a lot. It happens a whole bunch of times. So there's a different kind of thing going on. It is only... Uh, it should only always be set up in a way where my inputs are along the x-axis and my outputs are along the y. That's something we have to remember. Now, I think that pretty much covers what we want to talk about here. But the big takeaway here, the big thing I want you to think about, let me just get rid of this for a moment. Maybe we can go back to the old thing. Yeah, let's go back to this. The big thing you've got to remember is that what we're creating here is a function, right? This whole thing, let me just draw this in a different color. This whole thing here, what is that? What is that? This is a map of slopes, right? Map of slopes. And what is this? It is a derivative. A derivative of the x versus t, x versus t. So why don't I just call this something here? Why not I say this is going to be f of, well in this case my x-axis is t, so this is f of t. So this is a derivative, this is a derivative of this function, this line f of t. And what do I call that? Well that's that's equal to my um, delta the chain dx over dy. Uh, that's the same way, same thing as saying a, a delta x over delta y by the way. Um, of course, in this case, it's not it's not y, is it? Um, let's let's call it for what it is. That was dt or delta t. And is there an easier way of saying this? Can I say this? Yes, you can. You can say that I go from x to dx over t. But I could also say a derivative is also equal to, and this is another way of saying it, f uh, a little apostrophe apostrophe t. This is what we want to do. I can find the individual single slope at this point, but what I want is I want to create a function, a function that shows me the slope at all points along that function. That is what I'm interested in. Because there is a big problem with what I'm doing here. Because so far everything's been easy. But let's consider another situation. Here's a new function. Here's one. Wee. Okay. So the question is, what do I do what does the function look like here? How does this how do I go from here to here? Because what's going on here? This is this is not constant slopes. This is not constant. It's changing all over the place. How do I make a map? that has a curve. How do I make a map of the slopes of a curve? And that's what we want to talk about. So if you're ready to find out how we're going to do that, then and how we're going to use limits, go to the next video and we're going to talk about that. Because this is a big question. How do I make a derivative? If this is, um, let's call this f of t, how do I make f prime of t?
how do I make the derivative of this function? That's what we're trying to do. That's what derivatives are all about. Let's figure out how to do it. Okay. See you in the next video.